Hey, uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the Jinsoku uh, LC40. I bought it with my own money. I hadn't seen anybody that had actually purchased this for their own money that's done a review. And, you know, some of them are pretty accurate. I know we have a plane flying around. It's So, uh, yeah, I, I think it's fair to do a, a review of somebody who's actually used it for a few months. Uh, tell you what I like, what I don't like. And uh, if you're thinking about getting one, like, should you? And who is this for? I also have the Atomstack A10 Pro or uh, A7, X7, I guess. Uh, I'm going to review that one next and kind of pit the two against each other, even though it's it's a bit not fair because this is a 10 watt and this is a 5.5. Uh, so I'll keep that in mind um, because there's definitely some things about uh, the Jinmitsu that are just far better. And, uh, you know, vice versa, of course. Um, yeah, let's go in. So, just this build quality, right? I mean, with with this one, I had to put in the belts and everything. With most of them, you have to do belt tightening and things like that. With this one, it just comes all assembled. It's ready to go. So easy. It has internal bearings inside that just work really well. It was so easy to put together. Uh, as far as physically putting this th thing together, it was so much easier than the Atom Stack. Now, on the software side, there are like something called a flash you have to do to use Lightburn. It's not hard, but I would say it was probably one of the harder things to do with this model. And I guess that would be the difference. If you're better with software, which you need to be anyways using Lightburn, then the Jim Mitsu is definitely the way to go if you're maybe you're not sure about hardware that much. I mean, look at this cable management. Why do why does not every single company use this? I mean, you see all these different ones. They have these cables flopping around everywhere, uh, and you know, with this one, you can just it it just works. They did a really great job putting this together. Now, of course, it is 5.5 watts, so that's not going to be for everyone, and uh, I guess that's what I'll get to. If you want to do a lot of cutting, I would not, especially wood, I definitely would not recommend this. Now I've used it to cut, and uh, you see here, it's it can be very inconsistent as far as goes for me. Like I'll show you. I did these both this morning, and this one didn't cut through at all. At all. Same wood. This one cut through. You can see it cut through right here. And uh, you can see we've got some squares in the back, both with air assist and with a knot. So I, this one here is with air assist, and this one here is without air assist. And you can see air assist is just so much better. So I put on my own air assist, and uh, what model did I get? The Diwali. And, you know, I... I did this myself because they don't have an air assist directly made for this machine. So that's kind of one of those things. And uh, we'll bring this stuff inside and uh, I will kind of show you the things that I did and didn't like and some of the things that I cut with this. Okay, let's go over a little bit of this. Uh, these are the, this is the tests that I just did. And you can see it did really, really well. And when I uh, do the atom stack, uh, you will be able to see that, of course, it's going to do way better on this test. But as far as engraving goes, I think it does a very good job. And, of course, you can cut out this board at 75% or 100% at 100 speed. Now, that has been the case some of the time. And that is kind of one of my biggest problems with this when it comes to cutting. You can see, look how fantastic this has been cut out. No problems whatsoever, like butter. I think this was 100% speed at like 160, wait, 160 speed at 100% power. And it was wonderful. But then I tried to do it again. And uh, I get things like this. Part of it cut out, part of it doesn't. So I try and recut it, recut it. Uh, you know, after a few passes, it really just doesn't work anymore. So you kind of just waste it. 
So I ended up wasting quite a few pieces because it would cut it out, same speed, same everything, and then it wouldn't. Even if, you know, everything else is perfect. I tried, you know, several times to make sure that I didn't do anything differently. But in the end, I did cut this out. This is, uh, this is made 100% with the Jinmitsu, and it worked fine. Um, good, good to go. And these all, you know, this is five layers of wood all cut on it. Problem is, is that, you know, if it's not going to be super consistent, I wouldn't want to use it for cutting. Now, in Jinmitsu's defense, this literally is not made for cutting wood. It's for engraving wood. Perfect. You can see these engravings are great. I don't typically do a lot of pictures, so this is all I need it for when it comes to engraving. I was going to be doing my engraving at a makerspace with a 150 watt laser. That's where I did the cutting. And so it wasn't going to be a big deal. But I decided to move all of my projects at home. And I really don't cut more than this. Uh, this is about three millimeter. This is fine for me. I mean, sure, I'd love to be able to do six for some of my projects, but that's about it. I mean, you can see here's about a six. And so that would be nice to be able to cut out. I don't really need a lot more than that, uh, but really the Jimitsu was not made for that. Now, as far as cutting the paper out, so if you're somebody who wants to make cards and things like this, this is cardstock. Did a great job on that. And uh, you can even overlay that on top of one of these. Um, foam does a really great job of cutting out foam. You can see I, I use these to also make clocks out of this. And uh, I do a lot of it, the backing, I do the back and wood and then foam and then paper. It just makes it very light, easy to hang on your wall. Uh, really happy with the foam. I learned a lot of new things that I could do. And it's pretty cheap. Get a pack of 20 of these at uh, your local craft shop for like six bucks. So that works out pretty well. So overall though, I just really love the way they put it together. I love their thought process as far as how they, you know, how they did everything. And uh, I am super happy. I think the price right now is like $340. It's kind of the perfect laser for somebody who's just starting, who doesn't want to deal with a lot of uh, difficulty in putting something together. Uh, now, I, from what I can see, the X tool is very, very good at also this thing, where it's pretty easy to put together. Now it's going to be more expensive. And really, every time I turn on my computer, I'm getting an ad for X tool, which kind of feels weird, you know, but it does seem to be a good machine. I haven't got one yet. Maybe I'll try one at some point. If I need to go to the 20 watt version, which I may, I could also upgrade the Atom Stack, which I have. So we'll, we'll see about that. But as far as the Jinmitsu goes, I think it's the perfect starter. Other than dealing with the Air Assist. And they said they were going to come out with one for it. They may have, but on their advertising page, they don't even list that. Now they have one and a nozzle for their other machines. So I would imagine they're going to do that. But keep an eye on this one if you're looking to just get into lasers. Lasers are absolutely fantastic. I am so happy I learned about lasers. Uh, lasers are so amazing because you can wake up in the morning and have an idea. And by the evening, it's done. And you have to learn new skills to be able to make things. I didn't know anything about leather working. This is actually the first one I did. I've done a lot more since then and got a lot better with the leather work. Use better woods and whatnot. But... This turned out great, and it was uh, just an idea. So lasers are a badass, and I highly suggest you get into them. And I think this Jinmitsu LC40 is a nice way to begin. All right, I hope you like that, and I'll see you in the next one.